Good evening, I'm Sarah Sapsanano. Let's begin with the headlines of the hour. Russia agrees to provide 5 million rubles in compensations to families of Nepalese who died in war with Ukraine. Grave answers piles up over the modus operandi of the leadership of Maui Center amid a growing gap between ideology and practice. In a surprise development, Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz nominates Shehbaz Sharif for the top job as his brother steps aside. And Nepal secures an eight-wicket win over Kuwait at the ACC Women's Premier Cup to take on Malaysia on Friday for a spot in the final. The special court is to announce its verdict on the irregularity in Lalita Niwa's land transaction tomorrow, despite the earlier schedule for the announcement today. The court has cited delay in writing the verdict. On 5th of February 2020, the Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authority had filed cases against 175 individuals for illegal transaction of the Lalita Niwa's land in Baluatar, which included former Deputy Prime Minister Bijay Kumar Gachadar, former ministers Dambar Bahadur Shrestha, Chad Dev Joshi and Chabiraz Panta. The defendants also included former secretary Dinesh Haru Adhikari. The authorities' chief Deep Basnat himself has also been engulfed in the controversy along with officials at the land reform and revenue offices and those who sold and purchased the land. Overall, the case includes four ministers and three former secretaries for illegal selling of 113 ropani of land in Lalita Niwas. Other ministers suspected of connection were former Prime Ministers Madhav Kumar Nepal, Baburam Bhattarai and CPNUML Deputy Chair Bushna Podil. However, the authority has not filed case against them. As a result, the authority has received criticism for giving impunity to people based on their power. Russia has agreed to compensate the families of Nepalese nationals that lost their lives in Russia's war with Ukraine. Earlier, Russia had agreed for compensation, however, the families had to travel to Russia to receive the amount. The Nepal government, meanwhile, had been urging to provide the compensation through the embassy. According to a spokesperson for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Amrit Kumar Rai, Russia has agreed to Nepal's request and would now provide the amount through Nepalese embassy in Moscow. The compensation will now be released to the Nepalese embassy and then be distributed by the ministry to concerned district administration offices and finally to the families. Russia has agreed to provide citizenship to foreigners in the Russian army that are fighting with Ukraine and 5 million rubles to the families of those who have died in the war. The amount totals to around 7.3 million rupees, however it could go up if the deceased had an insurance. So far, at least 12 Nepalese have lost their lives in Russia-Ukraine war. Four Nepalese have been head, held hostage by Ukraine. The exa exact number of Nepalese recruited by the Russian army and those injured is yet to be ascertained. Diplomatic efforts to repatriate Nepalese that have been recruited against Nepal's laws have failed so far. On 4th of December last year, the government had sent a diplomatic note to the Russian government to avoid recruiting Nepalese nationals in the army and to immediately return anyone taken in. The Russian government is yet to comment on the diplomatic note. Now, Minister for Foreign Affairs N.P. South is preparing to go to Russia himself. Leaders and cadres of Maui Center have suggested for a change in the party's name and election symbol. They made this suggestion in the statute convention underway in the capital since yesterday. Coordinators of the convention groups are of the opinion that the current name is not appropriate and that the party needed a name that would promote a socialist image. They also opined the current symbol was inconvenient and suggested to design a more easy-to-understand symbol. Suggestions have also been made to determine the tenure of all position and to ensure direct election system in all levels. Twenty groups discussed on this statute draft and 13 groups have given their suggestions so far. The remaining groups will put forth their opinions tomorrow. Each group has been given 10 minutes to put forth their opinions. The event will resume at 11 a.m. tomorrow and Prime Minister and Party Chair Pushpa Kamal Dahal is also to respond to the suggestions. The statute convention will revise the party's statute. The party is also preparing to reduce the size of the Central Committee. The party's Central Committee members, alternative Central members, three Central Commission members, among others, are attending the convention. 
This is the party's first statute convention. It is time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. But before today's question, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we asked you why has the government failed in repatriation of Nepalese stranded in conflict regions. 38% voted for option A, wrong strategy, 51% for B, lacking sensitivity and 11% for C, it's a complicated case. Yesterday's question, why are discussions underway to change the name of Maui Center? Your options are A, ideological deviation, B, attempt to win public support and C, paving way for unity. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. We'll take a short break here, more news coming up. 13 lawmakers are to put forth their questions to Prime Minister Pushpa Kamandahal and the Parliament on Sunday coming week. This includes leader from the main opposition, CPN UML Gokarna Vishta, Kiran Kumar Sa and Kalu Ram Rai, who will ask the Prime Minister about good governance, economic slump and efforts in place to rescue Nepalese that have been stranded abroad. 15 lawmakers were grouped to ask questions to the Prime Minister. However, former Prime Minister and CPN UML Chair KP Sharma Oli and Unified Socialist lawmaker Krishna Kumar Shrestha have not listed their questions. The other lawmakers that will raise questions to the Prime Minister are Nepali Congress lawmaker Gagan Thapa, Kantika Sejwal and Kishore Singh Rathore. Likewise, Kalpan Choudhury, Kalpana Mia Kusari, Kushum Devi Thapa, Kambadur Garbuja, Ganesh Parajuli will also raise questions to the Prime Minister. As Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal is set to take questions from lawmakers at the parliament, in our public voice segment today we've asked people in several provinces if they have a question for the Prime Minister. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Rozgari just a visa man. Tapai tesro choti pradhan mantri huda pani dramatically rupma tapai le kina kini paribatan garna sakhnu bhai na. Shichhe kandaran sanga gare ka shawmati haru kati ko kare nain garna ancha. Usta garche usta garche vanna nine gariye ka san tisa bhai nine haru nine ma matra simit naun. Bideshik yatra ma rai ka sampurna Nepali haru ko overflow like kosari rokna sakne yojana banana bhai ko sa. Pura samrit da bekti nirvad garna ko lagi yahar ko tarpa baata bhai ka kadam haru ke ke san. Madhesh ma pichhiriye ko. स्वास्थ्य र शिक्षा प्रति तपाईको योजना के छ प्लस 2 गरेर विदेश जानु पर्यो त विदेश तिर उनीहरुले जुन लाग्दै छन् त्यो विदेश नै युवाहरुलाई रोक्नको लागि प्रधानमन्त्री जुले के पहल गर्दै हुनुहुन्छ अव्यवस्थित तरिकाले जुन पत्रकारिता गरिरहेको छ यो कुराहरुलाई चाहिँ अलिकति सरकारले यसको आफ्नो अंडरमा आफ्नो माथातमा ल्याउन सक्यो भने अझ राम्रो हुन्थ्यो युवाहरुलाई चाहिँ प्रोत्साहन गरेर चाहिँ सरकारबाट केही सेवा सुविधा भयो भने चाहिँ सबैले राम्रो हुन्थ्यो आफूसँगै जन एकदमै हिनेका साथीहरु छन् उहाँहरु कति घाइते हुनु भएको छ तपाई प्रधानमन्त्री हुनु भयो धेरै चोटि देशको प्रधानमन्त्री हुँदा पनि उहाँहरुको लागि तपाईले अहिले सम्म के गर्नु भयो र अब के गर्ने सोच्नु सोच्नु भएको छ बन्द रहेका उद्योगहरु किन सञ्चालन हुन सकेन तपाईलाई जनता रे प्रधानमन्त्री प्रधानमन्त्री भनेर सम्झिरहनु हुन्छ तपाईले चाहिँ जनताको बारेमा कतिको सोच्नु हुन्छ दक्ष जनशक्ति राई र बेरोजगारी युवाहरुलाई नेपालमा एउटा रोजगारीको सृजना गरेर रोक्न पाए राम्रो हुन्थ्यो भ्रष्टाचार निवारण गर्न प्रधानमन्त्री जीउले के के उपाय Time now for international update. Former Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif will be the nominee for Pakistan's next premier to lead a new coalition alliance formed between different parties after national elections last week returned a hung parliament. The Pakistan People's Party yesterday said it would support Sharif's party to form a minority government, ending a stalemate after inconclusive elections in the nuclear-armed nation lead to days of political, led to days of political uncertainty. A spokesperson for Sharif's party, Mariam Aurangzeb, said in a post on social media site X, formerly known as Twitter, that Nawaz Sharif, the elder brother of Shehbaz, had nominated him for the post. Shehbaz Sharif belongs to his brother's Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz PMLN, 
the largest recognized party with 75 seats and PPP is second with 54. Together, the two parties have enough for a simple majority in the 264-seat legislature. Independent candidates backed by jail former Premier Imran Khan have won 101 seats, making them the largest group, but they cannot form a government on their own, having run as individuals and not a party, and have ruled out alliances with PMLN or PPP. The co-chairperson of the PPP, former President Asif Ali Zardari, has said his party expects former Premier Imran Khan's Pakistan Tehrika Insaf to be a part of a reconciliation process. However, the alliance has ended uncertainty over government formation for now, five days after the February 8 vote gave a split verdict on and sparked worries of fresh instability in the country. Indonesian Defence Minister Prabowo Subianto declared victory in a presidential election after unofficial vote counts showed him with a huge lead and on course for a single round win in his third attempt at the presidency. Political veteran Prabowo, a former Special Forces commander, trounced his rivals, winning about 58% of votes, according to four pollsters, based on quick count, ballots at sim samples of voting stations nationwide. The number of votes tallied ranged from about 86% to 95% as of 1400 GMT. Rivals Anis Baswedan and Ganja Pranowo trailed with about 25% and 17% respectively. A preliminary count by the Election Commission was far slower and showed Prabowo securing 57.7% of votes with about 6% of ballots recorded. The contest pitted the two former popular former governors against the pre-election frontrunner Prabowo, who was feared in the 1990s as a top lieutenant of Indonesia's late strongman ruler Suharto. Crucially, Prabowo has the tacit backing of the wildly popular incumbent Yoko Widodo, who is betting on his former rival as a continuity candidate to preserve his legacy, including the inclusion of his 36-year-old son Gibran on the ticket. It is time now for the sports update. Sports News. With a hat trick from Sitarana Magar, Nepal women's national cricket team have secured an eight wicket win over Kuwait to progress to the semi final of the ACC Women's Premier Cup. In the match played at YST UKM Oval in Bangi of Malaysia, Kuwait won the toss and elected to bat where they posted 73 runs for the loss of nine wickets in 20 overs. Priyada Murali top scored with 29 runs while Shanti Bala Subramaniam and Khadizar Khalil added 13 runs each and none of the other Kuwait batters scored in double digit. Sita was the pick of the Nepali bowlers with her hat-trick. She picked three wickets in her four overs, giving away only 11 runs. Kavita Kaur and Rubina Chetri Belbashi shared two wickets each. Nepal were presented a revised target of 50 runs under the Duck and Duckworth Lewis method. The Nepali Eves reached the target in 6.5 overs, losing only two wickets. Skipper Indu Verma remained unbeaten at 22 runs alongside Kavita Josi with four. Sita Rana Magar also added 17 runs for Nepal. In her hat trick, Sita had picked the wickets of Priyadi Murali, Mariam Omar, and Kuwait skipper Amna Sharif Tariq. Prior to this, Team Nepal had finished as the group winners of Group D after securing wins against Hong Kong, Bhutan and the Maldives. They will now play Malaysia in the semi-final on Friday. In the other semi-final, Malaysia saw off Japan to move to the last four. A revised team Nepal has been announced for the ICC World Cricket League 2 series, which begins at home from tomorrow. Head coach Monty Desai has included Anil Shah and Dev Kanal following their brilliant performances in the three-match one-day international series against Canada. A team had been announced under the captaincy of Rohit Bodil before the Canada series. However, two changes have been made, made in the team after the conclusion of the ODI series against Canada. Anil and Dev have been included in the squad, replacing Arjun Saud and Rijan Thakal. Anil had remained unbeaten at 112 in the third ODI against Canada after scoring Nepal's fastest half-century in 19 balls in the second ODI. Meanwhile, Dev had scored 76 runs in the second ODI. Other players in the squad for League 2 are Asif Seik, Kushal Bhurtel, Kushal Malla, Arif Seik, Bhavan Saraf, Bhim Sarki, Dipender Singh Aidi, Golshan Jha, Sompal Kami, Karan Kesi, Lalit Raz Bangsi and Surya Tamag. In the first series of the League 2, the Rhinos are to take on strong competitors, the Netherlands and Namibia. 
in the first match of the triangular series, Nepal play Namibia tomorrow. Meanwhile, Nepal star all-rounder Dipinder Singh Aidi is to miss tomorrow's match against Namibia as he is in Dubai for the International T20 League. Two matches of the UEFA Champions League are slated for tonight. Paris Saint-Germain of France take on Spanish side Real Sociedad, while German giants Bayern Munich take on Lazio of Italy. That is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.